Hello everyone, welcome back to Into the Hive Mind. Sorry for a bit of a break, but I was either preparing for Iron Halo, driving to Iron Halo, playing at Iron Halo, or recovering from the drive back from Iron Halo. Anyways, in case you have not figured it out yet, I'm going to make this video as a short recap on, you guessed it, Iron Halo. Now, I'm going to start off this video by saying something blasphemous. I did not take Tyranids to the event. My teammate asked me to take his list in his place as he could not attend, and he wanted to see how his list performed before it got changed with the new codex coming out. Having said that, his list was really unique and actually a lot of fun to play. It's an Ultramarines list that revolves around taking as many upgraded characters as possible and then protecting them with a Land Raider Achilles. Uh, it also does not have any of the Marines from the Indomitus box, so that was kind of a refreshing change. Uh, the Land Raider Achilles is upgraded to be a character by taking Sergeant Cronus, which made the list really fun. Um, I will post the full list in the video details in case you want to give it a look, but the list actually performed exceptionally well. I only lost two games, the first to Salamanders round one because I played too aggressively and my opponent ended up taking eighth in the event. Uh, the second game I lost was to Blood Angels on round five. Uh, they got first turn on me in the scouring mission, which does not have any objectives in your deployment zone. And when Blood Angels get turn one, uh, he just locked me in my deployment zone, keeping me from scoring any points at all um, until I tabled him turn four, but still ended up losing by 11 points uh, at the end of the game. So overall, I took 17th and best Ultramarine player, which I think is pretty satisfactory. Anyways, uh, talking about Iron Halo, it is a very large event that's been running for about six years now. This year, it is the largest event that has happened so far, thanks to the coronavirus and events being kind of postponed. Um, this event was held right on the Kansas-Oklahoma border, kind of in the middle of nowhere, but it's centralized enough that we had people playing from all over the country. We had players there from Florida to Iowa, and I myself brought my team in from Colorado. So if anyone had looked at the stats as far as what armies were intended, or were in attendance, there were a few surprises there that we noticed. First off, there's only one Tau player out of 126 players. This does confirm what people have begun to realize in that Tau, while still a strong army, just cannot play to the current 9th edition GT missions. Next was realizing that there were five Orc players. They all brought very different lists from each other, and... I really think custom jobs has given the faction a really large boost and mech orcs are probably going to be around to stay for a little while in the competitive scene. Other notes, there was a surprising lack of Death Guard and Grey Knights compared to the Flying Monkey Major, which was in the same area of the country only one month previously. Uh, I think there was only one Grey Knight player at the event and any Death Guard army that was there was accompanied uh, very strongly by Nurgle demons. Unsurprisingly, there were plenty of Marines. They're either Ultramarines or Salamander shooty lists, or they played very aggressive White Scar and Blood Angel lists. There were even actually a fair number of Space Wolves. Uh, regardless of chapter though, just about every Marine list were built using the same units in various combinations. Those units are as follows. Uh, Grav Devastators. I'd say 90% of the Marine lists either had a squad of these or they were replaced with Plasma Inceptors. Uh, I was caught off guard game one with just how killy these guys can be, especially with the right canicles, giving them plus one to hit and plus one to wound. Uh, they can really blow anything off the table. The next unit is Blade Guard. Seriously, they're in every chapter. They're everywhere. Um, they're just incredibly durable models that sit on objectives and bully anything else off of them. Eradicators. Unsurprisingly, I'm sure everyone knew this, but two units of Eradicators at least in probably 80% of the lists, and that includes the aggressive combat Blood Angels and White Scars. They're still bringing Eradicators to pop those tanks or anything really scary. Uh, beat stick characters. There's at least one in every marine list. Um, that Whether that's going to be a smash captain or Gilliman, there's at least one character who's going to be fighting twice, fighting in death, just really punching you in the face. 
So make sure to take something that can handle that. And then the last unit is aggressors. Now, aggressors were mainly confined to either salamanders or ultramarines, but if you're fighting either one of those marine lists, be prepared to fight these guys as they're going to probably have six to nine of them. A lot of lists had models that were exclusively toughness five with a three up save pretty much list wide. Um, thanks to the Indominus box, this is very easy to do. And this means that anti horde weapons like bolters do practically nothing to lists like this. And because of that, everyone's been escalating the power level of their weapons. So if your weapon is not at least AP two and strength six, it's not really worth taking unless you can get a plus one to wound on it. Now, going on a bit of a tangent here, I do want to point out a couple of odd lists that actually performed pretty well. So people have backed away from taking a lot of anti-tank weaponry as it's overkill because eradicators take care of about 80% of the big things in the game. So taking any further anti-tank killing weapons is just kind of unnecessary. But because of that, uh, pure knight lists actually did a little better than anticipated. They didn't go crazy, but the top knight list went 3-0 day one and even took out Ryan Snyder's custodies list. Uh, but then day two, they kind of hit that brick power wall and lost two of their games. But they did end with a respectable 4-2 record and taking 21st place overall. In a similar vein, three gargantuan squigoths went 3-0 day one. Unfortunately, the player forgot his mech guns at home and the player was disqualified from being able to play day two. However, I am very curious how such a list as this would have performed as 105 toughness eight wounds is really hard to get through and the amount of mortal wounds that it dishes out on top of an insane melee platform can be really scary. I honestly expect to see one or two of these lists creeping up in the bigger tournaments in future events. I will give a shout out to Tyranids, as that's what this channel is supposed to be about. There were two pure Nid players there, one of which actually went 3-3 three and three with a pure Kronos Battalion using Triple Exocrine and Hiveguard. He also took Sweeper or Swarm Lord and the Reaper of Obliterax, Flyrant, which uh, is an interesting take on the Size of Tyran Flyrant that I've been talking a lot about. So I'm really curious how well that Flyrant actually performed. But overall, 3-3 three and three with Nids in a major event is not bad. So congrats to that player. But overall, I think that this event proved that, at least here in the United States, Power Armor is still very much the name of the game. Uh, 12 of the top 20 lists and all of the top 3 placings were either Space Marines or Custodes. And as a side note, uh, Ben Sherwin is a fantastic player and he surprised a lot of people by taking second place with Black Templar. Black Templar are seen as probably the weakest primary Marine faction right now. But after looking at his list, I think that's very much the player over the chapter. The only unique element of this list is really a big blob of 10 Storm Shield Thunder Hammer Terminators. Uh, the rest of the list is standard Indominus and every unit that I basically listed before. Uh, but having a five up feel no pain will make that Terminator unit incredibly hard to shift off of an objective and it really will just obliterate anything that comes too close. I also want to say congrats to John Lennon for taking the biggest event of the year so far and solidifying that he's very much still a top contender for the ITC again this year. I have to say I'm very excited to see what new things will come to the competitive scene with the October releases. Uh, it's definitely going to be a massive shakeup of the meta, and I look forward to seeing what rises to the top. Uh, I'd be very happy to see Necrons once again asserting their dominance, so we'll just have to see. But that's all for this episode. Again, just a short recap on the Iron Halo, and I'll be sure to release more Tyranid videos later this week. But thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye.